Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from AlexMercedCoder.com and this is a new video because GitHub released a new feature where they added some more functionality to the markdown syntax that's usable when you're on GitHub.com. In this case, they added Mermaid. So Mermaid is a plugin that allows you to write markdown and actually express flowcharts. So that's really cool. So you can actually create a flowchart like this in your markdowns on GitHub.com without having to do anything without having to like draw or anything you can just literally write it out as text like you see here i haven't done this before so basically this point of this video is for us to try it out again i've been under this markdown kick the last couple days so if you've been to my blog toots.alexmercedcoder.com you probably noticed that the newest blog post is why all developers should master markdown where i talk about different tools that use markdown why you should write markdown highly recommend reading it. it's a quick read but definitely worthwhile and my previous video where i was talking about notion and how you can use Markdown in Notion. So Markdown is just a really cool skill to have. Really useful, especially if you take a lot of notes, which I do. Um, and write articles and just write. Okay. I definitely love writing in Markdown. And even after this, I'll show you HackMD, which is also a really cool tool. Um, but anyways, so basically, um, Mermaid. So it looks like what we can do, this sh I think just should work right out of the gate. So I'm gonna just create a new, a new repo and we'll just call it like Mermaid Practice. Mermaid Markdown Practice. Okay. <laughs> and let's create a new markdown file. So we'll just call this readme.md. And we'll just start off saying, hey, this is like my mermaid practice file. And say, hey, I can use mermaid on GitHub now. This markdown is practice. Okay, so it looks like the way you would do this is you would create a code block, which is three backticks, and I would use the word mermaid as the language for that code block. Okay, so let's try this. So basically, you can just write uh, some words, some text. You say, hey, it's a graph. So it looks like, hey, we're saying this is going to be a graph called TD. And then we can just say one, so let's try this. So mermaid. So if I say graph, I'll just use the same name they did, TD. And let me see, it looks like they tabbed. Yeah, it looks like a tab is involved. Okay, and if I just say, hey, you know, first, second, second to first, so the arrow points to where the arrow is going. Second, actually second to third. And third connects to first. So we'll just make it like a circle. Let's see if that does what I think it should do. Okay, so if I hit commit new file, do I get a flowchart? And we do, that's cool, look at that. Okay, so we'll see first connects to second, which connects to third, which connects to first. Very neat. Okay, that is very cool. So they show some other examples of form of, 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 of stuff we can do. Okay. Uh, for the diagram, uh, let's see here. They, here we go, mermaid syntax. So let's play around with this a little bit more. Okay. So let's try this. So basically this symbol here creates this right here. Okay, and then you can put the word in the middle has. So let's try that. So let's just take a look at that. So again, the syntax for that is curly brackets, pipes, two dots. Okay, so let's edit this again. And we'll do this with second. So I'll change this from an arrow here to curly brackets, pipes, two dots, pipe, curly bracket. And then we can do a colon and then we can have like a word that shows up in the line. So we'll sit there and say, you know, text. Okay. So let's see if that works. Oh, that didn't quite render the way I expected it to. Let's take a look at the example. Customer. Every address has, maybe needs a spaces. Uh, edit. Uh, 
Okay, and then we have spaces after the curly brackets. Yeah, the spaces before and after the curly brackets. So let's add some spaces there and see if that makes a difference. See how strict the syntax is. Uh, third, and then there's some sort of syntax change here. Let's look at that again. That looks correct. Okay. Let's see what happens if we just copy this. Like, will, will this work? Oh, I think I see why. Because I think I have to use it. You actually have to specify it as an ER diagram. Oh, yep. Because see, that's the, the ER diagram declaration. So that's why that's not necessarily working. Let's see if I do that. Let's see here. I say ER. Instead of saying graph, I say ER diagram. And I think there was some ca ca casing in there. Yeah, ER. It's capital case. So ER diagram. Let's see here. Does that make a difference? Uh, you, it recognized it, but let's see here. It's going to want something like this for all of them. Can't use that just point, plain old pointers. Just try that to get it going. Still doesn't like it. So let's see here. Customer. I'm breaking. We'll have to play with this. But you see, but the point is that it, it works. It shows up. Let's see here. If we go to the flow chart, uh, you do the flow chart. And then you can see the different syntax for different types of charts. So like start, stop. So that's kind of like what we were doing before. Um. Oh, and that's what the TD stands for. So TD stands for top to bottom. So it starts at the top. And then here you can do a chart that starts left to right. Nice. So that's probably what's messing up over here. Let me take out that TD here and see if that makes a difference. Hmm, nope, still doesn't like it. Um, but as we can see here, the syntax basically is you have to declare what kind of graph it is. So this first line, you declare what kind of graph it is. And then you can actually do it. So we have graph. Um, that's just like our standard graph. Flow chart. Okay, and you can do different shapes. Okay, cool. So that's like for just like standard flow chart. Node shapes. Text in a circle. Nice. Lots of different shapes. Okay. Beta flow charts. What's this? Okay, and this is like, oh, the subgraphs. So basically, these are the subgraphs. And you can do that by doing like subgraph two to create these squares. This is really cool. Okay. So, node. So, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this. And now you can do this all. And this is like now just built into GitHub. So, you can just like learn mermaid syntax, which um, I'll definitely spend some time on. Um, this is, seems like a pretty cool thing to know. And uh, you can make charts in your markdowns now. That is pretty cool. Okay, and just to show you nothing, because since I said, mentioned that I would show it to you, this is website, uh, hackmd.io. It's another tool you can use to edit markdown files. Okay, and the cool thing about it is that you can push your markdown files. Like, you can create a markdown note here. So, like, this is just a note being written in markdown using hackmd. And here I can write markdown. So, I can just be like, hello. You know, do something like that. You know, just do normal markdown stuff. Right down here, you have some visual tools here too. And you can see what it's going to look like over here. But what I can do is that when I'm done with it, or whenever I, whenever I want to back it up to GitHub, I can actually go over here, and you click here to versions and GitHub sync, and you can actually push it to a GitHub repo. So I'll say, hey, like I click here, push. Okay, and then after you connect your GitHub account, you know, you can... This, now this one's already set up, but you can choose like, hey, I want to push it to a particular branch. Uh, I want to partic push it to a particular repo. And you can push it. Okay, so you can back up your notes on GitHub, but you can have it use this editor instead of... And you can actually pull markdown files you already have on GitHub and edit them here. So that way you get the nice extra tools for 
and preview mode for when you're editing your markdown files. So that's pretty, pretty cool. And you can do this with teams. So it's, you can, you know, do team editing and share files and all those cool collaboration tools. But it's just another really cool tool for working with markdown. So I figured I'd mention that while I'm here. Um, but with that, I'll see y'all later. Again, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. So hit the like button, subscribe, and um, yeah, and then subscribe to my podcast. So subscribe to the Web Dev 101 podcast and the Data Nation podcast. And I will see you all around. Follow me on Twitter at Alex Merced Coder. If you're into data related posts and big data and stuff like that, follow me on uh, at AM, uh, what is it? AM Data Lake House. Um, but just look up Alex Merced, you'll find me. And I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day.